right the way from the middle of the week all the way through to the men's elite road race women's elite road race uh, under 23s time trials the whole lot will be bringing you absolutely everything myself david duffield russell williams sean kelly a host of uh, rider interviews team personnel interviews people in the in the commentary box were on air for quite a long time in the last couple of days and expect to hear an awful lot of stuff and a flavor of madrid as well having heard uh, alicia marino on uh, british eurosport i'm not going to madrid without getting out in the evenings and enjoying it and i don't think any of the rest of us will well i'm going to be with david duffield what else can you do as we see Isabella they're going to uh, pre us to go 19 seconds I don't think uh, he's going to bridge that gap now because unless they really start playing about up front and uh, the interesting one here of course you know with the uh, riders we have uh, there's uh, Horsler from Gerrister and Elmiger uh, Fuentes Lamprey th and th uh, those teams they haven't won a stage yet so uh, it's uh, the Comunidad de Valenciano La Tassa's team they of course you know won two stages so an interesting uh, one for this and maybe uh, make the race for one of those riders and one of those teams who have won a stage. Two kilometres to go then for the leading, well, under two kilometres to go for the leading riders. Thabalia working very hard to try and get back on it. And I think for those people who've never ridden in a group at all, it's very difficult to realise how much more difficult it is to work by yourself to catch these guys rather than sitting in here in a group of four or five. Really is a, a huge difference, Sean, isn't there? Yes, uh, it uh, makes a huge difference. And as you, you know, go to the end of the stage, and uh, in a race, uh, you know, where you've been on it for three weeks almost, you know, the body is getting tired, and uh, you, you know, really uh, you have to be really in good shape to be able to close down a gap like this against four riders because they are working quite well together. And you know, when they attack like this, this sudden acceleration, of course, you know, it brings up the speed again, and it's uh, really difficult for a rider to come back in the last five kilometres. And you know, when you went away there, it was about 15. 18 seconds and he hasn't really you know eaten into that uh, t uh, that time gap at all well it's Juan Manuel Fuentes who's taken the jump first we said he's a nippy little rider and likes to jump out and attack they're all winding up about 500 600 meters to go now I'd watch out for the man in the light blue Heinrich Hausler he's right at the back they're still going to close down Juan Manuel Fuentes though Lamprey could do with a victory Fonak could do with something to deflect attention from the obvious questions that are being asked Fuentes, though, in the, the least uh, useful position at the moment. Now they can afford to play cat and mouse. How far behind is Fabalia? This is the question. Elmiger is uh, being forced to leave things out. Hausler in the best position, I would suggest, Sean. Yes, I think Hausler have it under control here because, uh, as we said, he's the best sprinter. And, uh, you know, in this position he's in the moment, uh, I think it's a good one. And I can't see him not taking this from what he is. Well, it's uh, the big man from Indigap Valenciana who's going for on this side. Martin Elmiger as well. Hausler still has the, the gap in the middle. Can he get through? He's going to get through the middle. Taking on Martin Elmiger. It's Heinrich Hausler taking the victory. His first big, big victory. And what a talent this young man is. The Gerolsteiner rider who's been as high as sixth in the sprints against Pataki and Zabel and all the big men. Oh, despair for Juan Manuel Fuentes. Uh, Constantino Thabalia tried to get across, but uh, we saw him right on the very edge of our picture. As the as La Tassa led out the sprint from the front. And uh, Martin Elmiger went with him, but uh, Hausler was a bit lucky to get through the middle, I think, a squeeze through the middle, but he had it perfectly under control. Pablo Lastras now coming in to take uh, sixth spot from Elias of Relax and then young Linus Gardeman who really kicked off the whole thing earlier on and CSC coming over the line Roberto Lysaka well you wouldn't have expected him to be up there but he comes over in about ninth place just about a minute down so we now have a massive wait for the peloton and there will be a couple of riders strung out between them Heinrich Hauser a little bit uh, well he's used to barging elbows I'm sure and in the end, he just saw the gap, not quite as close as I thought it was because Latassa had given up by this point and had it well under control, Sean. 
Yes, well, as we said, the position was quite good, but uh, he was a little bit, you know, uh, the door was a little bit tight on him for, for a moment there. And, uh, you know, he got through in the last number of metres, but uh, still he was under control. And uh, I think, uh, you know, he was, you know, the best one at our favourite, as we said. But Elmiger, uh, you know, threw in a good sprint there because, uh, you know, he stayed, uh, he stayed for quite a long time on the front before uh, Hustler could just overtake him. Well, they've run under the one kilometre to go, Banner, and CSC have kept the pace very, very high indeed. They don't want any surprise attacks today. They want any problems whatsoever. Francisco Mancebo is on the far right-hand side of your screen, but CSC are the guys who are leading it out with the peloton coming into the last 500 metres. Mancebo wants to be four back. Sastre will be three back. They just There's no time bonuses to be gained by doing this. They just want to protect their position. Sastre is right in the middle. Mancebo is right behind him. And these guys just going away for position. There's no uh, real advantage here. And I think that's uh, Jimmy Casper on the far right-hand side uh, going with the yellow shoes. And uh, the Thomas Ziegler, I think, is the other rider in there as well. Mancebo sitting up. He's safe. It's not a problem. Dennis Menchov comes through as well. Roberto Heras is through. And Sastra. Off. with that great ride up at La Covadonga a little less strapping on that leg today but 15 stitches still in that left knee 10 along the top of the kneecap but 5 down the side tremendous focus by this man just trying to get it together what's going through his mind Sean now well, he's uh, just, you know, thinking of the, the first number of corners, I think, uh, you know, he would have uh, rode this course this morning and uh, he would have, you know, studied all the corners. So I think he'd be thinking about that just as you go off the ramp, the first three or four corners to get a picture of them in your mind once again. And uh, just concentrate like for this uh, full time trial now and just get it over it. Eight kilometers to go then for, <laughs> for the urged on Francisco Mancebo. <laughs> That's fantastic. I love this, the uh, huge uh, amount of uh, yelling that goes on from Spanish directors' cars. Good stuff. When you were time trialling, Sean, did you prefer a director to be uh, silent with you or just cajoling occasionally, or did you have this the full Spanish works thrown at you when you're on Spanish teams? Uh, well, I did not have it like what hearing from uh, what Manchego was getting here because it's all the time, uh, you know, encouragement and information, and uh, it's something that I had to plan with my director when I was with Cass, for example. I wanted, you know, uh, uh, precise information every so often, but just give it a chance and give me a time to be able to, you know, take it in because when you have somebody throwing that at you all the time, it's difficult to take it all in, and also in another language is a bit more difficult. Wow! Look at that. Fastest time for Roberto Jerez. Well, so much for taking it easy. One second faster than Dennis Menchov. Well, that's absolutely fascinating. You'd have thought he might just want to take it a little bit easy, Sean, but uh, he's not in the least bit bothered. He's really going for it. 
he certainly is and uh, you know he's not uh, taken big risks uh, I, I you know I'm pretty sure of that in the, in, in the corners and any bit of down he's but he's you know definitely very strong here and relaxed I suppose with the four and a half minutes advantage he's going into relaxed and that's the time you put in the better performances Robert Plaza blocking the new best fast this time 41 31.3 23 seconds faster than Victor Hugo Pena Well, this is a good uh, recovery by Carlos Garcia Casado, who's 26th fastest <laughs> through the midway checkpoint. That's a very, very good uh, result for him. But here comes Francisco Mancebo, almost caught him for two minutes. A great time by this man. He's going to pass uh, just fall short of Ruben Plaza's time. Trying to avoid all the litter on the road as he comes through to the finish. But a very, very good time for this man. Second at the moment. Is he going to be? He's going to stay in second as well. Ten seconds down. Oh, just look at that effort from uh, Francisco Mancebo. But he knows it's not going to be enough to dislodge uh, Carlos Sastre. 58 seconds the advantage this morning. And here comes Sastre. Started two minutes behind, remember. Now on the outskirts of uh, Alcala de Henares. Interestingly, we were talking about Antonio Alex, our Spanish commentating colleague. Uh, he's commentating with uh, Luis Capistani, who won here in 1985 in a time trial. Swapping sides of the road. We we'll apologise for the breakup of picture. Nothing we can do about that for you. Well, it's been a marvellous uh, Vuelta España. It's been uh, it, it threatened to have been a particularly dull one in the first week, didn't it, Sean? It was not particularly interesting. Certainly, speaking from a commentator's point of view, it wasn't a particularly interesting one. Uh, Alessandro Pataki uh, enlivening it in the sprints, but it's turned into something quite uh, epic, especially that uh, long attack or the the attack of Liberty Seguros and then the lone ride up to the La Covadonga by. Uh, Roberto Heras, it really made the thing come alive and the fact that it's been so close underneath Roberto Heras, it's been a wonderful, wonderful uh, welter in the end. Yes, it certainly has been and uh, you know, we see that um, Menchov was riding, you know, quite well and uh, quite a comfortable lead and it looked like he was going to hold on so uh, we were just, you know, concerned that it was going to be a bit boring but I think, you know, Harris and the uh, Liberty Heroes team certainly, you know, uh, changed all of that and uh, that famous uh, uh, stage that he attacked uh, Menchov, I think that was, you know, made the race and made it more interesting, of course, from there on in and of course we have all these riders here as we see Sastra and Manchebo and those are still fighting for a place in the general and that's also kept him pressed high. Second fastest for Carlos Sastre then. A brave attempt by Francisco Mancebo, but in the end, he's actually lost seconds to Carlos Sastre. A handful of them. Well, two very plucky riders. Two very big fighting riders. I think a lot of people like uh, Mancebo, people like me like Mancebo, anyway, because he always looks tortured and therefore you always feel he's the underdog. But essentially, and Sastre is a very quiet rider. They're both from the same area of Spain. They come from near Avila, where we were the other day. We're in uh, Castelli La Mancha again today, by the way. Finishing from, uh, well, starting at Guadalajara. Guadalajara is basically just a provincial capital these days. Used to be a massively fortified Muslim stronghold. But uh, after the Muslims were pushed out from northern Spain, I'm afraid it just went downhill. And really, it's just a bit of a provincial backwater now. And we're near its glorious past. This man is riding a fabulous, fabulous uh, time trial today. Roberto Heras running through the 26 kilometre checkpoint in fastest time. Ahead of Dennis Menchoff and Ruben Plaza, Carlos Sastre and Mancebo. Really terrific stuff. He's managed to keep his form all the way through the Vuelta despite well, an injury that would have put mo a lot of people off continuing I have to say quiet man from Behar well here is uh, Dennis Menchoff coming in to record his time what will he do he's really giving it everything he'd love another stage win to make up for uh, his loss of the overall he's not going to do it he's not going to do it Second for Dennis Menchoff at the moment. He's going to slip back beyond that as well. Third. 
Third fastest for Denis Menchov. Sastre recording something faster than he. And still, Ruben Plaza tops the table. Well, if he takes the victory, Ruben Plaza, that will be his best win by far in uh, a major race, or probably in his career. And to have beaten such good time trialists and good top men and uh, bring another win for Comunica Valenciana, what a great uh, tour they're having. Yes, certainly he's uh, you know lived up to his, his performance in the past time trial in this race, and uh, he, as we said earlier on, uh, he was you know one of the favourites going in here. But you know, uh, would he be able to just pull off the victory? And uh, certainly, you know, uh, it's up to Harris now if he can do that. And Harris, of course, will be aware that you know he's on a very good time. And uh, when your uh, race leader, the yellow jersey on your shoulders, and the final time trial is something that the riders love to be able to you know uh, go out there and win that and prove that you are really you know. Uh, the the winner of the race and you know you're still finishing very strong and here as as you said uh, you know finishing ima uh, amazingly strong in this race because this time trial from him it's an extraordinary one i guess he's had the advantage in the last couple of days of being able to hang back and let other people do the attacks he's had all his team around him to shelter him from any wind to keep him uh, out of trouble had a little bit of time to almost take a breather if you can in a grand tour if that makes any sense at all wearing this gold jersey for Another day today, complete gold skin suit today. Wasn't always gold. It's been orange in its past in the Vuelta Espana. It's been white with a red band on it. Let's just see. He's going to do it, Sean. Yes, he's going to take it. He's going to do it road. by some margin, I would think, by about 10 to 12 seconds, I would say, probably. What a fantastic ride by this man. Really just pulled it out of nowhere. I did not expect this at all, Sean. Ooh, is he going to take it, though? Oh! Oh, he isn't! <laughs> oh, commentator's kiss of death strikes again. I've done it again, haven't I? Second fastest for Roberto Heras. My word, 0.9 of a second outside of Ruben Plaza's time. Well, he can't be disappointed with that, surely. Ruben Plaza will be ecstatic. Yes, he certainly will. Uh, but Hales, of course, you know, after doing such a performance uh, right through the time trial, uh, just losing it by that much. And as I said, you know, as race leader, uh, he would love to come out of this one winning the time trial because for him to do that, it would be an, uh, an unbelievable performance. And that ride, like, it's uh, a fabulous one. And just to lose it by that much, uh, you know, Hales will be just, you know, uh, a little bit... Well, Sean was just saying while we were away, this chap should ride another day. He's uh, a long way, <laughs> he's a long way behind everybody, isn't he, Vogler now, uh, Sean? Yes, he certainly is. Well, he's uh, torn from the bottom of the classement to 125th in the general at uh, four hours and 41 seconds. So uh, he's probably finishing this race with a little bit of stunt and a lot of the riders because he's been out there for a stage <laughs> longer. He certainly has. Last man in the general classification, by the way, is uh, Genet, I think. The uh, rider from Puig Telecom. Well, it was pretty active earlier on uh, in terms of sprinting, and we're, let's, we've talked a lot over the last 21 days about the wonderful achievement of uh, Roberto Herat, one of the Gerolsteiner riders going away. Is that Thomas Ziegler again? Well, this is one of the hills you will be seeing in the World Championships. It's a nice surface road as well, pretty wide. Uh, Vogrenar now going backwards again. Well, <laughs> he's going to end up at the back. 
It's been uh, very active all the way through today, uh, mainly because of the sprints, uh, intermediate sprints. We, you'll forgive us talking and not about Roberto Heras for a little bit uh, because there's still a battle going on and that's for the points. Roberto Heras does feature in that. He is at the top of the table. Roberto Heras this morning leading the uh, classification in the points. And uh, only one man really capable of overhauling him. I mean, Dennis Menchov could have a go if he wanted to. Nine kilometers to go. 169 points Roberto Heras had in the points competition this morning. Alessandro Pataki, lying third, had 132 points. Well, um, if you do the calculations, there are three sprints today, each worth four points. That's 12 and 25 for a victory. Uh, that would mean that uh, if Alessandro Pataki won everything today, he would end up level on points with Roberto Heras. And there's, uh, in, in that, that sort of situation, they then count how many stage victories in the first place each member has had. Roberto Heras, of course, has had two individual stage victories. Alessandro Pataki has had four. So he would take the points competition should he win the sprint into the finish at Madrid today. Well, I can tell you, Alessandro Pataki has won all three intermediate sprints so far. So he is definitely going for it. That's a one way to warm himself up for the World Championship. He'll uh, maybe get a little bit of uh, extra information about what it's like to ride with a group of fast-moving riders on this course. Uh, I'm surprised he's gone all the way through to Madrid, Alessandro Pataki, Sean. Yes, I think uh, that was, uh, you know, we're thinking into the second week of the tour, how many more days would he go on for, but he's went all the way, and as you said, it would be nice to ride around uh, most of the circuit for the World Championship, which is uh, next Sunday, a week from today, and uh, he will get a feel for what it's like, what the hills are like, especially, I suppose, for him. That'll be the most important thing. And uh, he's definitely riding for the uh, points classment here, because, as you said, he's taking, you know, the three hotspots already. Uh, the only disadvantage, of course, today, he has many teammates, there's quite a number of teammates out, there's four missing, so he's just got, you know, Bel Bel uh, Baldato, Bernucci, Ungarato and uh, Sanchez Pimente uh, for the sprint. So it's a little bit difficult for him. They have to calculate a lot here that they don't give too much of an effort earlier on because uh, he hasn't all the lead out men that he had in the earlier part of this race. Well, uh, as far as when they get to the final line, you'll have to uh, discount uh Julian Sanchez Pimentia because he's the climber, he's the, the token climber. So Ongarato, Bernucci and Beldato will be the guys doing the work for him. Garcia Costa and Costa on the front and it was Thomas Ziegler coming out. Well, let's just have a look at what happened in the sprints this morning. 32.8 uh, kilometers for the first sprint. Pataki took the first spot, that gives him four points. Michele Scarponi of Liberty Seguros took the two points for second place, which uh, just goes to show that they were still concerned about it, Sean. Even when Roberto Heras has the overall in the bag, Scarponi tried to outsprit Pataki and take those points away from him. No chance against Pataki, I don't think. Interestingly, though, Charlie Vigelius, we've not seen a thing of Charlie Vigelius at all. The Englishman riding uh, for Liquid Gas took the last spot. And we've noticed, uh, just before we came on air, Charlie Vigelius was doing an awful lot of work on the front, helping Faster Mortolo bring a few things together. Uh, so... Obviously, Vigelius knows which uh, side is bread butted as far as living in Italy as a professional is concerned, and uh, he's giving them a little bit of a hand today. Alessandro Pataki took the second sprint at Fuerlanbrada at 69.7 kilometers, and unsurprisingly, Luis Pazamontes and Joseph Jupre, both of Fuerlanbrada, Relax took second and third places. It's where their base is, where Relax, the Relax squad are based, and there were, oh, there were thousands of people out on the side of the road cheering them up. And then just as we came, just before we came on air, in fact, at 101.7 kilometers, the last of the intermediate sprints, Pataki took that from Baldato and Ongarato, both teammates, of course. So really going for it today, just shutting down all opposition, however they needed to do that, with the help of a couple of other uh, teams coming to the front as well and giving them a hand. Garcia Costa looking over his shoulder. He's now being eaten up. Another little counter-attack going off the front. Bocherov and Luis Pasamontes launched the counter-attacks. Oh, about uh, 25 kilometers ago, Pasamontes from Relax and the Bocherov from Credit Agricole. They were out for quite a while, Sean, but uh, they've been uh, well controlled by the peloton, these little counter-attacks, haven't they? 
Uh, yes, they definitely have. We've seen, you know, they were the Butcheroff and Fasamontes. They were never allowed any more than about 15 seconds, and we could always see somebody from Faso riding in the front, just keeping the tempo and just leave them hang out there. And uh, that's what they're going to do. Just, you know, not get too carried away when the attacks go and start closing down immediately. Because uh, number one, I suppose the riders they have left, they have many, so they will have to calculate this one well and not do too much, and uh, you know, to uh, be able to take Pataki into the final uh, couple of hundred meters in this sprint. Uh, so I think it's going to be very difficult for anybody to get away. Even uh, Garcia Costa, we see him there being pulled back once again, and I don't think this, you know, uh, it's got, not going to be his day to take it. He had his chance, I suppose, down to in Avila where uh, he, you know, uh, got very close to win the stage. But today, I think it's going to be down to the sprinters once again. I would suggest, Sean, that perhaps, perhaps we wouldn't see too much action by uh, Eric Zabel today because uh, he will be a teammate next year of Alessandro Pataki. I don't think he'd want to uh, annoy his new teammate Pataki in this new joint uh, Italian-German squad uh, by taking a victory today and denying Alessandro Pataki some uh, sprint points. I don't think that would be a good idea, do you? No, I don't think it would be the idea, but I think Pataki will be up there with it. Uh if it, w if it does, and it uh, looks like it will come down to a sprint, as we see Vichoso here uh, trying to break up the uh, the train from the Fasa Portola Royals, of course, Vichoso, a team at Afheris, and uh, they're trying to cause problems for them to, you know, to make them work, and uh, just to break things up and see with the, you know, uh, break up the Fasa train or what's left of the train, uh, but um, I don't think uh, Zabel will sprint against Pataki if it's for the win, but he's going to be up there, and he's going to be, you know, hanging around in the top ten riders, the top five riders in the last kilometre, two kilometres, and if Pataki is not going to take it, well then, you know, Zab would have a go, but I don't think if it was a straight-out sprint he would overtake him, because, as you said, uh, all the rumours and the information we're getting, it seems that he's going to join Pataki for next year. It does indeed. In fact, there's going to be a press conference next Friday in Madrid during the World Championships by this new uh, Anglo... Uh, Anglo, sorry, so it's a German stroke Italian team to tell people exactly what is going on because there have been rumors flying around all over the place. Vizio, so then just trying to break things up a little bit. Uh, that's not going to get very far, I don't think. He's trying that. He's a clever rider, Vizio, so. And of course, I think Ayres, uh, he would love to take this uh, points jersey because it's not often, yeah. often he gets the opportunity and would like to, you know, uh, to have it on his palmarès and getting so close is not often he do that. And of course, yesterday, so close in that time trial, if he could have pulled that one yesterday, well then he would have, you know, be secure of the jersey. Well, if you were in uh, Roberto Heres' position, uh, who would you be talking to in the peloton saying, come on guys, give us a hand? Uh, well, you know, it's, I suppose uh, it's difficult. Some of the Spanish teams, I suppose, have been talked about. What can you do here? You see, on the flat, we see uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, Vichoso there going away like this. Uh, it caused a little bit more uh, uh, pressure on the um, Faso Bortolo riders, but there's always riders to ride, as we see here now. The team all by riders have to come to the front, and when you get this stage three case to go, everybody's going to be flushing around the front, and uh, it's you know, impossible for anybody to get away. Of course, Harris, uh, to get up in this sprint, that will be his you know, uh, next target and try and stay up there, but... He's not going to take any major risks in case, you know, of a crash or something in the final kilometre or two kilometres, but uh, I think he might just try and take some uh, take some points here. Uh, I think he might just try and take some points here, but of course, and, and try and deny Pataki the opportunity of winning. Pataki has to win the sprint to win the jersey. There's no other way around it. If he doesn't win it, the sprint, he doesn't uh, he doesn't take the jersey. Well, I don't think Harris can do a lot against Pataki when it comes to this stage of the race. Because well, certainly not, but he might be. There might be somebody else who could do something against Pataki. Yeah, thing. Yeah. So I think you know Harris, of course, as I said, uh, you know, try and get up there on the sprint, and it's going to be difficult for him on this sort of one dead flat finish and uh, the corner before the finish. Of course, uh, it's going to be you know. Uh, difficult for position for him he's not a good rider on that if it was an uphill finish well then he would have a great chance of you know getting up in the places well there was a little bit of a tumble about uh, 20 kilometers ago a number of riders going down right at the very back two kilometers to go Victor Hugo Pena was a phonic rider who hit the deck uh, everybody's back up by the way just Marco Velo who uh, withdrew yesterday and uh, that'll be uh, I suppose a tiny bit of a worry for Alessandro Pataki. Velo, the last man off the train, but it's really beginning to motor now. Remember, Alessandro Pataki has to win this sprint in order to take the points jersey. And the liquid gas guys have been up the front. Uh, we've got some Davita Monlotto guys in there as well. Uh, Leon Van Bon, 
is the guy on the front now. I'm sorry about the picture breakup. Let's hope we get it back in time for the last kilometre because they're coming up very, very quickly indeed now. Still looks like Van Bon on the front to me. Well, surprising to see Van Bon up there, but uh, he does work hard on the lead out. Here we go. There's a whole load of Giovanni Lombardi is in there at the front uh, of the FASA boys as well. They're all looking around to see where everybody is. Well, we're under the one kilometre banner. We didn't get to see that. There's about uh, 600 metres to go then. He's going to have to take it out very, very early. They're going to weave across the road. They've got this big, big right sweep now. Where is Pataki? Well, he's got the lick. Oh, look at that. That's a terrible corner to have to get round if you're wide across the road. We've got uh, one liquid gas rider, I think, out ahead. This is going to uh, not play into Alessandro Pataki's hands at all. Well, what was I saying about liquid gas? Maybe I'm just talking absolute rubbish as per usual. Looking behind. Pataki's uh, train are going to have to eat this man up. He's not giving it full gas, though, the liquid gas guy, I don't think. He's looking behind. He's looking behind. Pataki has to win this sprint to win the points jersey. He's sat up. He's sat up. Has he? Where is Pataki? He's just behind there. There he goes, coming around the outside. Oh, with their example right next to him. He's still going to have to take it, but oh, I think a little bit of show there at the end. Uh, Sean, he looks across to That was a very confusing finish. I'm terribly sorry. He looks across to Eric Zabel. Uh, I thought he sat up for a minute, but I think it was probably Ongarato who sat up behind him. I couldn't see him obscured. That was a very messy finish as far as the sprinter's finish goes, Sean. Yes, well, it was, and the uh, the liquid gas rider, uh, you know, he looked like that uh, he wasn't really going anywhere, but uh, it looked like Wellius, Wegelis, actually, yeah. uh, but he was going very strong because we see they were sprinting behind and, uh, you know, not coming back, and we see Pataki, he's going at full and, you know, uh, taking a bit of time to come to, come to him with Zabel, as we see here. Again, I don't know if he would be able to come by him. He looked like that. He just slowed up a little bit, and as we talked about, of course, you know, joining teams next year.